Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at top 10 interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, AWS EFS service. Now EFS, it stands for Elastic File System and this is one of the storage service uh, that is available in AWS that you can use for a variety of uh, use cases. Now whether you are preparing for an interview or you are just looking to enhance your skills on AWS EFS service, then this video is just for you. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So the first question we have is what is AWS EFS and how is it different from Amazon S3 and uh, EBS volumes? So like I said, uh, EFS, that's another storage service you have and uh, it stands for Elastic File System. And this is a fully managed service provided by um, uh, AWS. And we can use this to um, share across multiple EC2 instances. So the whole point of your EFS if you, is when you want to have a common storage uh, that can be accessed by multiple EC2 instances, we can make use of your EFS. Now this supports your NFS uh, protocols, which is your network file system. So basically the, uh, the, sh uh, the, the sh uh, storage share is done at a network layer. Now how is it different from uh, S3? So S3 is object uh, storage. Uh, which is optimized for high durability and high uh, scalability and this is mainly used for storing your unstructured data now efs on the other hand it supports your directory hierarchy and file file system features like your uh, POSIX compliance and when compared to your ebs volumes ebs is block storage which is tightly coupled with your EC2 instance. We cannot share your EPS volumes with other EC2 instances, unlike your EFS volumes. The next question we have is what are the key features of AWS EFS? So one, it automatically scales up or scale down uh, based on the data, the files that you're adding or removing uh, to your uh, EFS. So it automatically uh, increases the capacity and decreases the capacity. Uh, then it gives you shared access so you can share the uh, EFS volumes with multiple EC2 instances and uh, these multiple EC2 instances can access the same file system concurrently. Then POSIX compliance so it supports standard Linux file system operations. Uh, durability and highly available so data is stored across multiple availability zones mainly for the fault tolerance. Then performance mode so it provides you with general purpose and max input output that you can choose from and then finally lifecycle management so you can automate uh, the process of moving the files to infrequently accessed in case you're looking at reducing your cost and if you have data that you're access very infrequently you can move it to the ia storage class to reduce your cost the next question we have is how does aws efs handle security so in terms of your security, it provides you with encryption. So it supports both encryption at rest as well as encryption in transit. Then you can uh, make use of IAM policies to control who can access and manage this EFS uh, resources. Then you can integrate it with the VPC. So you can access control via security groups and NACLs to basically control uh, your traffic at the network layer. And then you can make use of your KMS, which is your key management service. So you can use it for encryption purpose. You can generate your keys and then use that to encrypt your data. The next question we have is what are the performance modes in AWS EFS and when would you use each? So you have the general purpose, which is the default one. So you can use this uh, when you have latency sensitive applications like your web serving applications or any CMS application. So basically you don't want any latency with your application. Then you can go with your general purpose. Then you have your maximum uh, input output, max IO. Now this is mainly designed for applications that needs um, high level of throughputs and high level of IOPS, which is your input output processing per second. Now this is ideal for applications like your uh, big data analytics. And under this, you'll have slightly higher latency compared to your general purpose. So basically, if you don't want any latency, you can go with the general purpose. And if you're okay with a bit of a latency, you can go with your max IO. The next question we have is explain the cost model of AWS EFS. So based on your usage, so your EFS charges are based on your storage uh, usage. So uh, when, you, know, you have the standard storage, so higher cost, for your frequently accessed files and then you have the infrequently accessed which is 
lower cost for files that are accessed less often then you'll also get charged for the data transfer cost so if you're moving the data between regions or outside aws then you'll have to pay additional money for that uh, and then finally you'll have to pay money for your provision throughput so optional uh, but if you are utilizing provision throughput then you'll have to pay money for that as well the next question we have is how do you mount an efs file system on an ec2 instance so first you'll need to create your elastic file system in the um, uh, console then you will need to install the necessary utilities so you have utilities like nfs utils or nfs commons depending on the operating system that you are using you will need to install the utility and then you will need to run your mount command so the command would be sudo mount so basically this command you will need to run which will mount the elastic file system to your ec2 instance then you can verify the mount by running this df-h command so you should be able to see the elastic file system um, uh, attached to your ec2 instance and you, you can start using that the next question we have is what are the use cases of aws efs so one you can use it for web hosting where you want to store web server files and these files need, needs to be accessed by multiple ec2 instances then you can use it for big data analytics where you need to share the data across multiple uh, machines multiple compute nodes then you can make use of make use of this in container storage for persistent storage so you can use this in ecs eks or kubernetes you can also use this for backup and archiving so uh, uh, storing application data backups with lifecycle policies to move the data to infrequently access and then you can also make use of this in media processing where you need a centralized file storage for large media files uh, that needs to be accessed by multiple processing nodes so you can make use of your efs in that case as well the next question we have is what is aws efs lifecycle management and how does it help optimize costs so lifecycle management can help you to move your infrequently accessed data to uh, infrequent so there's another storage type called infrequent access so you can automatically move your data to the storage class and that will help you to save your cost so this is mainly used for your cost optimization so ia storage is much cheaper compared to your uh, standard storage but it offers you high availability and durability and this is ideal for applications where your data is very less frequently accessed but the data should be uh, available in that case you can go with your infrequently accessed the next question we have is can you use efs with containers in aws ecs or eks so yes we can make use of your efs we can use it as a persistent storage uh, for our containers that we are running in ecs or eks so for this again you will need to create your elastic file system first then you will need to mount this efs so if you're using EKS, then you can make use of EFS CSI driver. And if you're using ECS, then you can make use of your volume definitions. And this will enable you to share your EFS across containers or you know across multiple pods to basically share the data. The next question we have is what are the limitations of AWS EFS? So one, it is region bound. So EFS is restricted in a single AWS region. So it is region specific. Uh, when you create it in one region, like let's say North Virginia, uh, it can be accessed in North Virginia only. Then you may have an issue with latency. So higher latency compared to block storage like EBS. Uh, supported protocol. So it only supports NFS v4 and uh, 4.1. It does not support uh, um, anything else. And then compatibility. So this is primarily linux based and it has very limited support for windows machine so if you are working with linux then you can easily you can easily work with your efs but if it's your windows machine then it's very limited support and it can be challenging to uh, work with efs for your windows machines and that brings us to the end of our top 10 interview questions as part of your aws efs service um, again you know if you're preparing for an interview or you're just looking to enhance your skills then uh, these questions are ideal for you if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel and please leave your comments in the uh, section below thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video